Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today is January 15th, 2013. And this is the Can Kale Show, episode 66. 66, we are doing Tutorial Tuesday today, as you know, because we have moved from Saturday to Tuesday. That way we can have a nice, consistent schedule of Monday through Thursday at 7 p.m. And we can also be recording this live and answer questions. And since we are doing a tutorial, it's very nice for the classroom to be able to ask questions and then I can demonstrate them to you in real time. So we are going to be jumping right into the tutorial. <laughs> oh yes, today we are going to be doing bodies in perspective and also a little bit of like dynamic posing. Dynamic posing and perspective stuff kind of goes hand in hand when you're drawing bodies. So we're going to do a little bit of a mishmash of those two things. But before we get into that, we are going to go down, or rather up, up the lovely lane, up the lovely lane. Oh wait, you can't miss this, this awesome portrait of me that Alicia did in the comic style. Thank you, Alicia. And thank you to everyone else who, oh man, Alicia, you're just hogging the spotlight. All of your, are you cropping your pictures off to the side on purpose? That way we have to like open them. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, Jacob's catching on to it, too, doing this awesome line art of Vi. So we've got these amazing pieces coming in from everybody. Thank you so much for the sketches of Emma and all the support you've been giving to the comic. I really appreciate that, guys. And thank you to everyone who's submitting stuff to the Facebook. Please continue to do so. For those of you who are not following me on Twitter, please follow, because I will not spam you when I am riding my bike and sweating in places that you do not want to know, but I will update you when I am uploading new videos to YouTube. So, with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and move on to the tutorial. Move on. All right, guys, so today we're going to be talking about bodies in time and space, bodies in perspective. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and get started. So we've got our new document here and we've got our background kind of turned it down a little bit so it's gray a little easier on the eyes and then created another layer over top of it. And So the first thing I want to talk to you guys about today is how to really like push the body so that way like say somebody's like coming straight at you like how do you lay in the foundation for that body and I'll show you in just a moment. So let's go ahead and basically I'm going to explain a lot of the lesson today with simple shapes and stuff like that. Okay? And I got to remember to keep my eyes off of that chat for now. <laughs> we'll take questions at the end. We'll, we'll go for about 40, 45 minutes and then we'll take some questions and then we'll go ahead and answer those. Okay? So. Just pay attention to the shapes I'm going to be using here, right? So let's go ahead and draw in our head here, okay? Now a big thing, like that cross is representing the halfway point, and that's representing the eyes, okay? So a big thing that I like to focus on when I'm doing action poses and bodies in perspective, but specifically talking about the action, is... I always like to show the action right before it's happened or when it's completely followed through, right? So say someone's like, let's have this girl like swinging a sword, right? You're either going to draw her like this or you're going to draw her like that, right? You don't want to like never draw an action of a guy like like that, right? And it's just like barely, you know, touching the other guy's armor or head or wherever the weapon is hitting. Don't do that because that's the old school way of doing comics. Now, nowadays, we've realized that there's so much more power and that the human mind actually creates the animation when it sees the follow-through, the full follow-through. So let's go ahead and figure out what we want the girl to be doing. Uh, she's going to be like a warrior chick, okay? So, <laughs> because girls are more fun to draw, to be honest, for me. Okay, so let's go ahead and have her swinging her, her sword, right? So... First thing that I always like to do is consider the line of action that's happening, right? So the sword is going to be going through here, right? She's right-handed, like that, right? So she's going to be like, like that. You can even see what I'm doing, like putting my arm back like that. 
Oh, wait, wait. So, yeah, it's going to be going this way. <laughs> Consider the line of action and which hand is your actual right one. And then go ahead and go into that. Okay. So, we know for, for starters, one arm is going to be going this way, right? It's going to be really followed through. And it's going to be going back in perspective. So, it's going to be going like, if it was a road, it would be going back like that towards our vanishing point here, right? Then let's go ahead and take this other hand, and let's go ahead and complement what's happening here, right? So think about the flow. Like, I'm going to draw as many lines in here as I can, and then I'm going to kind of refine it, because this is kind of the sketchy kind of... This is the experimental stage, where I'm really just, like, playing around with lines and flow and seeing what I like, right? And then I figure out, like... It's almost like I'm saying, okay, what would look really nice if there was a shit... As if there was a shape right here. <laughs> I cut myself off mid-word there. It sounded really bad. A shape there. And <laughs> I'd like it to end here and then kind of go up like this, right? So it's pointing that way, right? Like a lot of things are coming down and pointing back up that way. Okay? And then I'd like an, for another shape to be going up here, right? Let's say that her... Oh, okay. Now we got to talk about country pasta. Country pasta is when your torso is on a different angle, a different plane, right? It's taking a different plane. One is going to the Bermuda Triangle. The other one is going to Ohio, right? They're on a different plane, and it kind of torques the, the torso, and it makes it look really cool, right? So if the torso is along this line, right, then the hips will look cool to go that way. It almost creates like an X shape. I hope that makes sense. Like, look at where the shoulders are lying. Shoulders are lying here, right? And it's twisting back like this. And then the legs are going to be going like that, okay? So just as an example right now, right? And it looks a little weird right now, but don't worry. We'll fix it. Right now, we're just playing around with flow and trying to figure out, hey, what looks cool here? What looks cool and what looks weird? Okay? Now, for this arm... This is where the second part comes in. If I want this shape to be occurring here, this arm is going to have to be coming towards us, right? Because, or going back, right? It can actually be going back too. And it might actually look better if it's going back in space. Because obviously if it was straight on at us, it would be too short, okay? So let's go ahead and have it going back. And then for the hands, I usually like to I like to do this thing, right, where the, I, I'll draw the wrist coming up, and then I always like to kind of curve that, like that's the wrist right there. And then I'll do this really quickly with, with the hands, right? I'll kind of group all of these fingers together, kind of make a quick little, you know, the design of a hand, right? And then I'll go back in and, and mess with the fingers later, because it's really important that you get, like, just the gesture down. The gesture is the most important part, Okay. Hope this is making some good sense to you guys. Well, let's go ahead and throw in, and I'm kind of like sketching in uh, anatomy as well, like very, very simple, simple anatomy. Not worrying too much about the muscles just yet. I'm more representing it with just simple circles, like this is the shoulder here, and this is the bicep and tricep combination, and it comes down, you know, to the elbow, right? Same thing here, right? Let's go ahead and draw in that shoulder. And the tricep going like that. And I want the overall, like, the overall shape of this arm, I want it to kind of go like this, like that, right? So follow that, that curve from that shoulder right there, and then curve it back, right? And let's go ahead and just draw a box there for our hand. And then we can mess around with perspective and all that stuff later. And then I'm just going ahead and just erasing some of these guides that I don't need. Okay? So now we're getting to some good things. So now you want to consider, like, how this back is happening. Um, one thing that I want to stress to you guys is don't be afraid to omit, like, huge portions of the body. Especially if you're doing really, really exaggerated uh, poses and actions, right? Because... 
Um, for example, here, let me go ahead and open up one of the comic pages from, from Emma and where we're doing this. So in part two, I think someone was requesting a, like specifically that we go into something like this. That's why I'm kind of doing this. Notice how much of her body I've actually omitted here, right? It's just her head. And then like this represents her like her chest, her waist, and then you can see just a little bit of her hip there, and the leg is coming down, right? And the other leg is coming out of this side, it's covered by the hair. So a lot of her body is being obscured by her pose. And that's something that you don't necessarily like you you don't want to be afraid of doing that. Like don't be afraid of be like, oh well people can't see where the rest of her body is, so they're not gonna know what's happening. No. The human brain can basically take what's given to it and then it basically translates that as, oh, okay, this is what's happening with that body, okay? But it's good to kind of like, I almost do like x-ray vision, right? It's like, okay, well, where is this kind of happening underneath this head, right? Like if the torso was like this, like almost think of it as like a cut shape. Like we took a little slice of it. It would look something like, like that, right? Like there's the middle point of the back and then it's connecting to like the butt and here's the leg, right? <laughs> it's kind of a, a bad, crappy, quick drawing, but that's kind of what we're thinking of here, okay? But don't draw the butt like that, because that's lame. <laughs> okay. So moving on, let's go ahead and make sure that we've got at least a good-looking, like, silhouette. I think that's another big thing, is your silhouette should always read as nice and clear. So that should always be nice and clear. And then I'll we'll go ahead and draw in Zabuti. Jabuti. And then I'm going to start just kind of erasing some of these guides, some of these uh, these lines here, right? And then you'll notice is you'll notice this, right? When you start creating the body with shapes, you'll notice that like you see that line that connected there. If I just erase that line. It automatically creates that little crease that's happening between the hip and the leg, right? And it's already in perspective, right? It's creating the ellipse. And it's creating a lot of creating here. <laughs> it's creating the illusion of the leg, right? Okay. So let's go ahead and continue here. So we are doing quite well here. So let's say we want this leg to go back like that. It's not bad. This little shape right here is representing the calf, and then you go ahead and just draw in the foot. And look at how simple that was. Look how simple I did that. And it still reads, your mind reads that as, okay, the leg's going back in perspective. Okay. And then let's figure out what we want to do with this other leg. What should be happening with this other leg? Let's flip this really quick. Same bad. I feel like this arm is a little bit long. Let's go ahead and grab that, lasso it, bring it in a little bit. There we go. So what do I want this other leg to be doing? If she swung like that, she would have to be jumping like She's jumping this way. She's jumping out at us, right? So the perspective arrow would be going this way, right? Perspective arrow would be going this way. So that would mean that one of her legs should probably be following that same perspective. If not this one, let's see what happens when we do it with this one. Might look funny, might look really good. No. Let's find out. Let's find out. Eh, it's not bad. Let's try something else. We got this. What if she was jumping downward? Ooh, that would be kind of cool. So the other leg would be going a little bit more like like this, maybe. Hmm. Eh, nah, I like the other one better. It's creating a cool shape. And I think a big part of it is just paying attention to the outer shape that it's making, right? It's like, okay, arm there, 
arm there, leg there. And then if you put like another leg up here, it's like, okay, like some starfish thing. Yeah, you can do it, but um, I don't know if that's going to accomplish what I'm looking for here. Let's see what else we can do. Maybe we can put her leg a little bit more out like this. That might look pretty cool. It's a little, it's a little long. <laughs> Let's go ahead and grab that. I kind of do like that though, like the this shape that's happening here. I think I might just go ahead and do that. And then again, use your x-ray vision to kind of follow this up and think about where it's connecting because the butt is here, right? The butt is there, so by since we know that is happening there, we follow this down with our x-ray vision, and we know the knee will be right around there, and then the rest of the leg will be there. So that's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty good to me. So let's go ahead and continue. And flipping will do wonders because you'll notice things that you didn't notice before. Yeah, that's that's not it's not too bad. Not too great either. I, I don't know if I like it out that far. It still is looking a little weird to me. How about that? I think that might work better because I like this arm like being there and showing like this space right for the silhouette and then I mean depending on how big her boobius maximus is uh, we might see a little bit of like her her boobs here you know she's a little bit more flat chested probably wouldn't see this but I just see the very very ends of those if you so choose you want to make her a bit more boobious maximusy. Okay? So that's good. That's very good. And she's lunging outward. So let's make sure we are showing again this this leg is going back into perspective. This arm is going back into perspective. Although not enough. Because this needs to be shortened. If you want something to be going back into perspective, basically all you got to do is just look at it and just kind of shorten it and move things a little closer together. All right? There we go. So now we're getting this shape happening here. We're getting this action line going through, and that's looking very nice. There we go. All right, so I hope this is helping you guys out so far. All right, so let's go ahead and draw in our weapon, right? Let's draw in our weapon so that way we can round this out. And drawing the weapon will also help quite a bit, right? There's a big difference between drawing a weapon that's situated like this, right? If her weapon was like that, like say she was swinging like this big battle axe. Oh no, wait, she's supposed to have a sword. Just used to drawing Emma all the time. <laughs> she has like a sword, right? If it's pointed like that, it'll look pretty cool, right? But if you point it out like this, it's going to look way cooler, right? Because then you get this whole like, like that, right? It's totally going that way and like a ding at the end there, right? These are the things you like to think about, right? Because you want to think about where would that sword be if you really followed it through? It would be like, like way back there and it's like a weighty sword, right? It's a really, really weighty sword. So you could even exaggerate it even further. You could even push it back like that. You could even do this. You could almost make it follow the same, like almost the same exact perspective as this was, right? And if you do that, ooh, man, it adds so much more weight and like character to 
you know, whatever it is your character, your other character is interacting with, right? It adds weight and it adds more realism to your character. Okay? Let's go ahead and, you know, make this a cool sword. Make this a cool sword. Zoom in on that really quickly. How are we doing on time? 7.20. All right, cool. So I'll see if I can do one more pose for you guys, too. And then I'll leave this as it is, and then if you have additional questions or want me to go further on something with this, then you guys can let me know. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and just erase these guides that we don't need anymore. We're going to go ahead and go into another figure. So this one's more like top-down. We'll do one from the bottom up. And I'll show you guys how to make sure that you're placing your features properly, specifically with a girl. All right, so that's how I would start that. And see, look at that. Look at how weird of a shape that is. Like, if you just look at the outside shapes, it's like, whoa, that's, that's weird. But then, you know, at second glance, you're like, oh, hey, that's a body. You're like, oh, that's a person swinging a sword. It looks awesome. But like at first glance, you can almost see that as well. You know, that's kind of the, the magic of the human brain. You're using that to your advantage. All right. So let's go ahead and go into our second figure here. Just clean up this. All right. Second one, let's go into from the bottom up, and I'll show you guys how to properly position your things. <laughs> your things. <laughs> All righty. So one of the big things I like to do, again, we're starting with simple, simple shapes. Let's say we're drawing like a girl and the perspective lines are going to be like this, right? So our vanishing point is way over here somewhere. And you got all these lines going up like this, okay? So the first thing you want to do is just draw in your basic shape and consider all of the consider all of the perspective that's happening here, right? Or the depth, right? The depth of the the torso and the hips and all that stuff. So as we're coming down, right, we're basically going to make like, you're seeing those little mannequins, you know, at the store, that they like dress up. You know, this is kind of what we're drawing at first, right? Like this shape represents the hips and the chest, right? The hips and the chest. I kind of like to draw a line down the center just so I can remember, okay, here's this, and then the rib cage kind of comes in and kind of goes in like that, right? I mean, that's a little bit exaggerated, but <laughs> you get the idea, all right? Now pay attention. Pay close attention. Now, I think a big thing that I see a lot of people struggle with with this and something that I've always struggled with is the placement of the neck and the head, right? The, the head doesn't come out right here, right? The head doesn't go like that, right? The head or the neck comes out of your back, right? If you feel your back, the spine literally goes up and connects perfectly with your back. So you want to think about the neck is actually coming from back here. Imagine x-ray vision, the other side of this, right? The neck is here. That is leading up to our head here. Okay, then again, perspective. This is the underside of the, the chin, right? Keep in mind these perspective lines, right? So if there's an eye here, there would be an eye here, okay? I think that's the biggest trick. The biggest trick to drawing a body in perspective is really just allowing the lines of the body to reinforce what angle you're seeing it from, right? Like this nose is going to also be covering a lot of this eye because we're seeing it from underneath, right? The more nose this eye covers, the lower we're seeing the face from. Uh, 
then eyebrow here, eyebrow there. Okay, and I usually just like to lay out my faces, kind of starting with just like those very <laughs> little cartoon eyes, right? And even the smile, smile follows this perspective line too, or the mouth rather. Okay, so that's looking good. Looking good. And then we got, let's draw on the little ear. Give this person some hair really quick. Cool. You guys are seeing all of this, right? It's not covering up anything? Okay, good. All right. And, oh, also I drew that head just like out of nowhere. Um, sorry, I didn't really explain. But, um... Uh, probably one of the biggest things that I always use is like when you're drawing the proportion of a person, the head, one head down is exactly where their chest is, like the chest line, the bottom of the chest. So basically take this, all right, take this size here, this measurement, and bring it down one, right? So it's about there, right? And it's out a little bit more, so it's going to be right around there. Because you want to think about, you know, it's not just taking this measurement. It's not this measurement and go down and that's where the chest is, right? It's, you're working in perspective. So you got to think about if boxes were laid on top of each other. Right? You got to think about if three boxes were laid on top of each other. It's, it's this measurement that you're looking for, right? It's the increments of these right here, right? You don't just take, oh, here's the top of the box, and here's the bottom of the box, right? Because that that length is longer, just a little bit, than this length. So it'll throw off your, your proportion, and it'll look weird. So don't do that. Don't do that. I'm watching you. All right, so moving on, let's go ahead and go into, like, the shoulders, right? Shoulders are going to be existing right here, right? And make sure, again, reinforce those lines. If the shoulder exists there... It's going to exist here on the other side. It's probably actually going to be blocked by the chest, but I'm going to see it. Let's go ahead and move into Zabubius Maximus, okay? So another thing, remember, going down one head size, it's going to take us to right about there, okay? So that is our chest line. So a big thing that I see a lot of people do, a big thing that I used to do a lot, is when I was drawing the chest, I'd like kind of like draw them as like circles, right? Like I draw them as circles like like that, right? And I try to like <laughs> make it look right. But these these figures, these things that are coming off of the female body are actually existing in their own space, right? So what you're going to want to do is draw them more like this, okay? Go ahead and erase these guides. Think about this line coming down. It's almost like you ever seen those toys like that get made at the McDonald's and they always have like that little line, like that little seam line. Think about the lines that would kind of like connect and create these shapes that are kind of coming off, right? And then the second like boob basically comes down like this. Make sure, look, this is the bottom of this boob, so the bottom of this boob is gonna be here, right? And it's gonna come off like that, and then go up like that, right? And then it's going to be, you know, like, here's the center point of this boob. And the center point of this boob is, like, over here, right? It's not the same thing. It's not like, okay, there's the center of that, so the center of this one is there. No. It's not the way it works. That is not the way it works. So don't do that. It works more like that. And then, again, when you draw that line through, the center should line up for each of those breastuses. Okay? Don't lie, that's the question. That's what you were waiting for me to draw this entire time. And now you got it, okay? Now you got it. <laughs> so another thing that I like to do from here is I like to kind of draw the edge of the rib cage and then kind of drop it down like that. And it's basically represented by that little shape right there. And the edge of this rib cage kind of goes down like that. And then the belly button is kind of like that there. And, yeah, not bad, not bad. 
give her some blush, make her look cute. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. And then that shoulder would barely be peeking over the edge there. Barely. Just barely. Oh, so barely. Okay. So, and then, again, like, remember, when you're drawing the hips, when you're drawing the hips here, right, think about how, you know, the hips go this way, and the hips go that way, okay? And then you got your crotchal region here, and the legs are going to come down just like that. Just like that, kind of. Oh, that hip looks a little weird. Be a little more like that. Anyway, the legs are a whole nother like monster, and I don't really want to go into it right now. But we can. We can later. But I'm not the best. Like, There's a lot of trial and error for me when I'm trying to figure these things out. But again, I think the big trick to drawing bodies in perspective is just be like, okay, the hip is here. Keep in mind where your vanishing point and where your lines are coming from. And make sure that each of those body parts is lining up with each other. Okay? Make sure that each of those body parts lines up with each other and reinforces the perspective lines that are going on. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so I'm going to go ahead and 7.30 right now, but I'm going to go ahead and continue like refining this figure over here, and then I'm going to open up the chat to questions, and anything else that you'd like me to go into, please let me know right now, and then we can take maybe another 10 minutes to explain something, okay? I'm going to erase these legs because I don't like them. <laughs> they look ugly. They look ugly. Don't look. Don't look. <laughs> uh, that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, maybe I'll at least try to get them right. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Popeye sized calf muscles. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, um, I kind of I exaggerate these calf muscles. On girls, yeah, I try to stay away from like really hard edges on girls. It's just from doing like the comic. The comic causes me to like make like sharper angles on stuff. This is seriously bugging me now. Seriously bugging me. I think it's just because I want her to be standing, and it's like kind of hard to make her stand from from this angle. I don't know. Whatever. That's a whole other monster, like I said. Does this apply to men as well? Yes. Yes. Oh, G. Woods is asking about the, the question with composition. Um, no, I was talking about that yesterday. In fact, I'll talk about that right now. Um, and I'll just leave those there for you. A composition I was talking about yesterday, and that was the rule of thirds. When you're setting up a picture, right? When you're setting up a picture, I always like to think about you, know, you draw two lines through it, right? And then lines this way too, right? Because the rule of thirds exists this way. And really, I've noticed that good good pictures have a cool like they have the subject matter happening here, right? And they have all kinds of other like background elements and stuff happening over here. But when you put things that happen specifically, like if you're able to line your character up on this line of thirds, and maybe their head is like here, it's going to make for a nice picture, right? Because it's balanced, and your your attention is going to a part of the picture, and everything else is complementing it. So. I would say definitely rule of thirds is a big thing that I always look into when I'm composing panels for comics and just in general like creating pictures. And the other thing that I was talking about yesterday that got muted was flow and that's something that I went into today. In fact, let me go ahead and darken let me darken all of these things and I'll just go over once again what we've learned. What have we learned? Okay. Let's go ahead and bust out the red for this. Okay, so the flow is basically what's happening here. Look, it goes up, around, 
like that, right? That flow is happening. This flow is happening, right? This flow is happening. You want to think about all of these things that are like creating a nice flow to your piece and like all the action lines that are going on, right? Because there's a lot of them happening. But I think it's good that you just kind of focus on a couple. And for me, what I really wanted to show was this action line, this thing that was happening like that, and then this, like that. And then this came in naturally afterwards, just because I wanted to position the legs. But you notice how everything just flows, and everything kind of has like a general idea that it's going this way. It's going this way. This is pointing that way. This is wrapping around and going that way. So you almost create like a circular motion and a flow to your drawing. That's the best way I can describe it, and I do that all on the wrong layer. <laughs> that's okay, that's what the history is for. <laughs> Javid, nipple tutorial. You troll. You troll. I'll give you a nipple tutorial. There you go. <laughs> Alright, so first, you create your shape. Okay? Then, you create the bottle thingy here, right? Then the nipple looks like that. Okay? And that, ladies and gentlemen, is, is how you draw nipples. <laughs> oh, man, you guys are awesome. Uh, Valkyo D is asking about, uh, does this apply to men as well? Yes, I will go ahead and do that. I'll show you. Yeah, just as a quick way to lay this out, think about your perspective lines going on here, right? And you'll have your guy's body, right? Which is going to be a little bit more burly, a little more big on the top, right? Small at the bottom. Your manly man. Make sure you got the chest that just kind of like flows, you know, like flows downward into the abdomen, right? So it goes like that, right? Think about, like, that's a big thing for me. I always like place that center line. And I think that helps me really quickly come up with the, figure out the depth. It really quickly helps me figure out the depth. So again, you're drawing a guy. Okay, he's got bigger muscles, right? Bigger muscles. Again, follow that across. The other arm should be existing here. The pec muscle is going to be right around there, right? And again, notice how these pecs don't... Notice how they both interact with the abdomen, right? It's almost like there's, there's this rib cage, you know, muscle that's happening here, right? So you want to make sure you draw that in as well. Okay, show the depth, the depth of those pecs, right? So these pop out a little bit. It goes down. This is your, you know, uh, this is your serratus anterior and your abs, right? Like that, like that, and like that, right? Just quick little Quick little drawings, little sketches to get us going here. Belly button there. And then the neck. Remember the neck comes from behind, right? It comes from behind the back. And this comes up like that, okay? And you guys are actually seeing this, right? Okay, good. I always worry that I'm covering it up. Think about that neck coming up like that. And then you have big, square-headed, manly man. Yeah, and see what we've done there? All of these lines are reinforced, okay? Hip, hip there, hip there. Ab there, ab there, you know? Like, some things, like, need to be moved around a little bit. Peck here, bottom of the peck here, bottom of the peck there. And that's how I basically lay it out for a guy, okay? His head looks a little big to be on that that abdomen, and again, that's not the best. It's not the best like guy's anatomy either. <laughs> but we're not doing an anatomy tutorial. I'm just showing you how to lay out your basic uh, your basic anatomy with shapes. All right. Hang on one second. Let's go ahead and save this out. I almost showed you something that I wasn't supposed to. <laughs> Something that I'm working on that you're not allowed to see. All right, so I'll go ahead and take a couple more questions, and then we're going to go ahead and wrap up episode 66 of the KNKL show.
<laughs> All right. Uh, somebody asked a good question earlier. Um, Mad Butcher asked about, would you recommend a wooden posing doll? What's the best way to practice more poses? Mad Butcher, I'm glad you asked this because I was thinking about this earlier. Wooden posing dolls are actually very, very bad. I don't know why they sell those things because they're so, you pose them and they, you can only like pose them so much and they don't really like go to like extreme poses. They're not organic. They're really, really stiff and boring. You know, they don't they don't have weight to them, right? Another big thing about the human body is weight. You know, when you're standing there, you don't stand perfectly like this. Usually you kind of shift yourself to one side and the, the weight from the, you know, on your foot kind of pushes your hip up. And there's like natural flow that's happening through the entire body that you cannot see. Let me repeat this. You will never be able to see it with a wooden posing doll. So the biggest thing that I would suggest that you do for practicing more poses is come up with ways, and I've done this myself, come up with ways to quickly draw the human body in a perspective, you know, uh, using shapes, right? So I'll like quickly just create a body with shapes. You almost create your own posing doll that can, that can bend and move exactly the way that you want it, right? So almost like there's this hourglass figure, right? That represents, you know, this, and then you got these circles represent you know, the, the arms. <laughs> and learn like the natural flow. Learn the natural flow of the body parts, right? Like notice, you know, just how I choose to make the the forearm lead into the arm like that, right? And then this little bump represents the elbow, right? Little things like that. And again, those are kind of stylistic choices. They're not exactly anatomically correct, but I kind of like to do that. Or you could even simplify it even further and just be like, okay, there's that there. This ball represents that joint, and that goes like that. I like to do it that way a little less because it's like really, really rough, and it doesn't give you any sense of how the shape is going to look afterwards. So I like to do it more like that. Right? And then, um, yeah, and then what I like to do is just kind of like draw in, you know, the legs like that. Just come up with what shapes you use to make your your figures, right? Just come up with your own shapes and figure out what works for you and sort of construct your own doll. And then after that, then you can go ahead and just be like, okay, well I know that I use like an hourglass shape to make, you know, the torso. So if I'm drawing this person like I did up here, right? This person, all it is is just that torso with that hourglass shape, right? And it's in perspective. Right? You see that right there? And then it's twisted a little bit. So if this was the center point, it's being twisted like that. And then that part's being twisted as well. And then you got the shoulder here, shoulder there, head there. And you see what I'm doing here? Now I'm starting to construct the body, constructing the body with shapes. And this way you can make them as crazy as you want. You can make your poses as crazy as you want, and they are confined to like some little wooden doll that can only like do like little robotic poses. You know, it just doesn't work. Because you could never do this. You can't you can't do this with a wooden doll. So um, yeah, I would just play around with poses. And like really I hope that you guys can look at this and be like, wow, some of these poses are really, really sketchy and really kind of rough. But this is where it starts out, like having that comfortability to just do that. And then you go back in and just kind of refine things and be like, okay, let's really figure out how this leg is going to work. Or, hey, this leg needs to be changed in its perspective. You can't, you can't get caught up in making art look perfect right off the bat. It just doesn't work that way. A lot of it is just being in that right mindset and being willing to experiment with the shapes and just get kind of the overall feeling that you want. I cannot tell you how much of my comic... It's just me going in and drawing like faces like like this, right? And it's just like really quickly like saying, okay, oh, they're up there, they're, they're grabbing something, right? Grabbing something off the shelf like that. And in that little drawing right there, there is something. There is something in that drawing that will literally translate itself because of how natural and organic it is to the final product. I don't know how to explain it, but there's something about when you just don't, care when you let it flow naturally that it just shows in your art it just you look 
comfortable or the, the design work underneath it just looks confident. And I think that comes from really just experimenting with shapes, drawing a bunch of stuff that doesn't necessarily look right or looks weird. And um, also I think a big thing is a little bit of figure drawing. I don't do a lot of figure drawing, but when I do, it totally like shows me like the weight, like how you know, I was talking about weight on bodies. It shows you how the body interacts with distributing weight when people are standing or sitting or laying down. And probably the other, the coolest part about figure drawing, I kid you not, is when you're drawing a real person, a real person's body, this nose looks really weird. When you're drawing a real person's body, it gives you, it shows you that in nature and in real life, there's always like a, like a line, like a flowing line, like a curve that's going through the body that is just so like, it's, it's beautiful, really, it is. And you just see it. It's like, it's just there. And it's so, and it's not always in the same part. It's not like the back or the leg or something, but there's always like some sort of like curving line that's going through it. It's never just like straight and rigid and like weird. It's always very organic and smooth and flowy. <laughs> it's flowy, man. It's totally tubular. <laughs> it's not like a hippie. It's totally like awesome. All right, last question, and then we're wrapping up the daily. All right. Yes, uh, Pose Maniacs is a good site. Pose Maniacs is much, much better. That also lays out the muscles and all that stuff. I definitely go for that. But again, that can only give you so many poses. You, when you really are going to graduate to like really being able to do whatever you want is when you come up with your own, come up with your own wooden doll, or come up with your own doll that's made out of shapes, and then you're able to go ahead and do that, and then you can pose that doll however you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see, yeah. Um, Mr. Tia Kwachi, I don't know if I can exactly pronounce that name, uh, is asking about how do I go about drawing Emma's body and like, like younger girls. Uh, I will go ahead and show you that. It's very, very simple. Again, uh, for guys and girls, it's actually just a lot of the same shapes are just changed a little bit. They're either stretched or, or uh, like more bulky in areas. But I'll show you exactly how I go about drawing Emma's body. Very very simple, right? So I'll start with her head, right? And she's got very very like comic booky, uh, cartoony proportions too. So these are not they should not be translated to like real people or like if you're drawing like a bunch of kids for some reason you wouldn't want to draw them with like freakishly massive heads like Emma has. But this is how I draw Emma's body, right? It goes down like this, right? And it goes right to her shoulders, which kind of which are sharp, right? They're like angles. And those angles come right at the edge of her head, right? Like that. And then her body consists of that hourglass shape, right? But she's she's very, very thin up here, right? And then in fact, let me there's a page in here. I drew it. I'm just going to grab that really quick so I make sure I do it right. Okay. So I've got it here. Okay, so all I do is I focus on, okay, one head down. I know that should be like kind of at her waist, right? So her chest line is actually kind of like right here. And here's the center point. So one head length down is actually like her waist, like the thinnest point of her body. Then it comes out to this point, And then her legs, Emma, I think is about six heads tall, maybe five and a half. Let me check really quick. I'm always <laughs> referring to my reference sheet, so I know that, but since we're doing it right here, I'm going to pull this up. So she is one, two, three, four, five. She's about five heads in length. So let me go ahead and go back into this. So again, like it doesn't need to be perfect. It's like one, two so just above two is about her her crotch line right and then I just I do these little lines right here because that is where her legs start right so there's three four five so on that her legs come right down like that like that and again look at that look at that little curve that's happening 
in her legs, right? They're not just like straight. This is a much more stylistic way to draw a body. But you'll notice, like if you compare this to like a real real person's body, there's there's a lot of similarities here, but there's a lot of things that have been done to make it a little bit more simple as well. And then, you know, her feet come down here like that, and then her boots actually kind of like create this big like almost like elephant feet, you know, on her. But it's kind of cute. I think that's one of the reasons why I like her design so much. And the boots weren't even my idea. It was my good friend David's. David had the idea to give her like these combat boots. And I think it's probably one of the best things that uh, happened to her. Because it really made her like really iconic and cool and fun. So, and then her skirt goes right across like that, up like that. And then her arms kind of just come down and they follow that same line. Right? Come down and follow that same line. So you can see that's basically how I would draw like a younger girl, right? It's like basically take that same hourglass shape and then just make it a little bit smaller, right? And she doesn't have any boobs really, so you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> you just make it just a nice thinner hourglass shape. And I really like doing this, like when you're drawing the legs, I like to just kind of close this off, almost like it was like a like a one-piece swimsuit or something, like if she was wearing, you know, like a little swimsuit thing, I like to just kind of close that off, because it kind of helps, like, it helps with, like, placing the legs, and it looks really natural and nice. So um, that's how I'd go about drawing, like, a younger girl's body in the stylistic comic thing. So, all right, last question. I'm not going to draw anymore. No more drawing. No more drawing for you. We are done. We are done drawing today. Well, done drawing tutorial. All right, guys. Last question coming in from Part Time Ninja. <laughs> when you do a drawing, how do you pick your color palette? Is it present in your mind before drawing? Hmm. Part Time Ninja. That is a great question. What I actually do is I'll draw out the entire picture first. Like I'll pose the character, and I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the cam view here. I'll pose the entire character first, right? And I'll kind of have an idea of what I want to do. Like, okay, they're going to be in like in a desert or like an abandoned cathedral, or it's going to be like a dark piece or a happy piece, right? And then once I'm done with all the posing and the line work, then I'll go ahead and do what I call color comps. And I think I've done, I don't know if I've done a tutorial on color comps, but it's basically like a thumbnail. It's basically just like a tiny little thumbnail, and it's a sketch of, uh, basically I take that picture and the line art, and I'll shrink it down really, really, really small. And then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll do some gradient mapping, which if you don't know what that is, you should watch some of the older, like, Emma, Emma streams, where, how I do the backgrounds, right? I'll paint them in black and white first, and then I'll throw in a gradient map, which automatically tones your your blacks and whites to colors that you choose and it makes really really nice gradients so once that's done I'll do that maybe three or four times you know f with different colors I'll just come up with little tiny thumbnail sketches of different color ideas and then I'll be like oh I like the feeling of that one or I like the way that one looks or hey this one's really like the focal point is really nice it makes you look over here at the piece and that's where I want people to look so that's kinda how I come up with my color palettes most of the time. Sometimes I just like figure it out as I go. But most of the time when I'm working professionally, I, I will do it like that. Alright guys, thank you once again for tuning in to the Kane Kale Show, episode 66, How to Draw Bodies in Perspective. I'm going to go ahead and sign off now. For those of you who tuned in live, thank you very much. And for those of you on YouTube, please thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs down if you don't. I'm Kenan Lafferty, and I will see you guys tomorrow.